Look, now you're a king chicken. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty. With the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday. Okay, so I started a sourdough starter the other day and I used a freeze-dried starter from Ballerina Farms called Willa, but I need to feed it. It's my second day. There's directions on what to do, so I can show y'all those. I'm not gonna tell y'all how to do this until I've mastered it because I don't know what I'm doing. So if it works, I'll do an entire process video, but let's feed our sourdough. She's looking a little liquidy. But these are our directions, so let's do it. Ooh, okay, actually, actually, there's a consistency. It's actually kind of cool. Maybe I do know what I'm doing. Probably not though, we'll see. We're gonna do 10 grams of our starter mixture. 25 grams of flour, and I already measured it. I'm using White Lily, unbleached, red flour. And then I'm also gonna do 25 grams, so equal parts water. Mix it all up. Thick consistency now. I'm just gonna cover her up push this off to the side and we will feed her again tomorrow. And the last thing I need to do is water my microgreens. They're still technically under their blackout time, so we're just gonna water them and cover them back up. Overall, I think they look great. They definitely need a little bit more ventilation. So I went and bought a few more trays. They were not expensive at all. Rural King typically has pretty good deals on all of their gardening stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and each line them with their own tray. That way they're not all stacked up on each other and they have a little bit more airflow. And then I'm gonna find very creative ways to hide them around the house so the dogs don't get in them because it's really cold and I can't put them in the greenhouse right now. So that's gonna be fun. The last thing I want to do is pre-soak the rest of the microgreens that I have, which is just three packs. So, I also wanted to touch on a few things. I saw a lot of people comment that I use way too many for the tray, and actually it's supposed to be a five by seven inch tray. I use a little bit larger tray than I'm supposed to. Microgreens are super compact in one area, so the tray that I used is actually a little bit too big 
but I think I think it's gonna be okay. They'll need to sit out and soak according to their packaging, but we have we have beets, sunflower, and peas. A few of y'all have sent us your favorite gardening books and they have been so helpful. As a newbie gardener, I can take all the help I could get. I've been working on garden planning since we have this goal of being completely self-sufficient. There's so much that goes into this and it's kind of taken over my life. And while I've been preoccupied, Cody's been moving tons of logs over to the sawmill in preparation to mill the rest of our deck and underneath container siding. As you can see, we've been stocking up on trees. Most of these are trees that we cut down whenever we originally bought the property, so they've been cut down for about two years. Wow, two years, that's crazy. Yeah, they've been cut down for about two years, so they've already had a good amount of time to dry. So since we finally ran out of logs over here, we figured it's time to start collecting all of them and start getting a stockpile over here. That way we can get all the bark off and let them dry further and start milling them. This is by far the thickest, heaviest tree that we've ever had, and it needs to be moved all the way over here. It's just Cody and I, let's see if we can do it. And that's exactly why it's important to get all the bark off and get them up off the ground. Something looks a little off. And so he went and looked around. She's off quite a bit. So we need to level her back out and do some work and a little bit of welding, which means I get to test out my welding skills. So, so let's do it. Before we start leveling it out, we're gonna go ahead and weld our jack back on because we didn't weld it very well the first time that it came on.
It's inevitable that problems arise and things happen, but it's all about how you handle it. The sawmill being this much off is a big deal, and while it's concerning, we're not going to waste any time. We could be irritated at the problem or just simply look at the bright side by taking full advantage and making a bunch of upgrades that will greatly help us in the future for milling. Cody's been teaching me how to weld for a little over a year now, and it's by far one of my favorite skills. It's a huge learning curve, so I'm happy to have projects like the mill to practice on. I had Summer take the wheels off so we could get as much extra clearance as possible. And then while she did that, I went ahead and welded all of our stabilizer jacks on because we just kind of had some of them packed in place, some of them weren't welded on at all. So we figured it'd be a good time to do that. And then I went ahead and started lowering it. So I'd say we got probably another foot, foot and a half lower to the ground. So it'll be much easier to get logs on now and much easier to operate. While lowering it, I kind of leveled it at the same time. I used the stabilizer jacks closest to the axle to get our left to right uh, levelness. And then that mixed with the front jack that you saw as well back on earlier, I used for our front to back levelness, I guess you could say. So now that it's level both ways, we just got to put the rest of our stabilizer jacks down so they touch the ground. I really need a better thing for this. I need to get an adapter for my, for my drills. We intended to cut the rest of the decking today, and while we didn't get a single thing done that we had originally planned, we overall saved us a ton of future time by the improvements that we made on the mill. So in my book, I'd call that a pretty good day. pretty chill night. I have a bunch of editing that has to get done, but we do have to do a few restock things for the week, and I told you that I would teach you how to make butter, and it's so easy, so let's do it. I'm going to be using my stand mixer, and then literally all you need is heavy whipping cream. So you're just going to pour it in. I'm going to be making a big batch because we go through butter quite often. The last thing that you 
can do if you want is add some salt. So I'm going to add just some pink Himalayan fine salt. I paused it for a second, but you're going to want to put it on a high speed for a very long time. It's going to go in three different layers. We're going to have our super, super foamy layer, and then we're going to have our kind of crumbly layer, and then it's all going to be solidified from your actual butter and your buttermilk. So we're going to let this go, and I'll kind of show you as the layers develop. But in a perfect world, I would love to use raw milk, but I'm having an issue finding places in Missouri to get raw milk. Right now, we're just using store-bought heavy cream, and that's okay. Let it go for a long time and check in with it in a minute. You can see now it's a little more frothy and bubbly, so we're just gonna let it keep going for a little bit longer. And this is the best time to get other stuff done, like do your laundry, feed your dogs, do whatever you gotta do because you're gonna be waiting a minute. When you get to about this whipped part, you're going to wanna start scraping your sides and folding it back to the middle. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. You can taste it if you want. It'll just kind of taste like salty cream. Pop it back in, and then back to spinning. It's super crumbly now, so we're gonna fold it back in and keep letting it go. It'll start getting wet, and I know that's weird because it's, you know, it's already like a liquid, but you'll, you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> so with clean hands, you wanna kinda like push it down get it off of the whisk. Take your whisk off and then try to get all of the bits. It's all goodness, you don't wanna miss any of it. Squeeze out as much liquid as I can and then pop it on some cheesecloth. I'm gonna take my cheesecloth and squeeze out as much as I can. Now you wanna rinse your butter. Some people don't. I like to. I'm gonna take off this cheesecloth and rinse my butter off. Plop it on a fresh, clean sheet of cheesecloth and then you want to let it hang. You can see some of the liquid already coming out of it. The last part of this process is the buttermilk. So I have all of this yummy liquid that you can literally use in anything. Substitute it for your milk in biscuits, pancakes, waffles, whatever you use milk in, you can substitute for buttermilk. So I have my jar of funnel, and then I'm gonna be using this little strainer, and I'm gonna just pour the milk in. We're just filtering out any of the rest of the crumble. And now you have yourself some beautiful buttermilk. So I'm gonna take it off of the hanger. It should be mostly dry now. Pop it in my glass bowl. Put a lid on it. And then I'm gonna just stick this in the fridge. They make buttermilk and sell them on Amazon, but I have not bought any. Maybe I will soon, but for now, she goes in a glass container in the fridge. And then before we go, I just wanted to show you the new addition to the family. We got six little baby chicks. So I filmed a little bit of the process of when we got them, so I will go ahead and throw some clips of that in now.
So Cody said that I could get chickens as soon as I made them a house and got them all ready. So guess what I'm doing? I'm making them a house and getting them all ready. Let's do it. We're going to go buy them today. Cody set up the crate and then I ran and got the chicken wire. We'll be starting our chicks inside. So they need to be inside for about six weeks depending on the weather. And we have four large dogs who are very curious. So we need to make sure they're in a very safe area that the dogs will not be able to get to them or bother. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did with our ducks because it was obviously very successful. And we're going to be putting a dog crate covered in chicken wire on top of another dog crate so it's really high up off the ground. When I brought the boys home, Cody did all of this for me. Times have changed. Not this time. I've seen people have really aesthetically pleasing areas that they keep their chickens in their house in. Not here. This is very functional. This is, we have an extra dog crate and we have extra chicken wire, so we're not gonna spend any money. Exactly. Okay, I'm ready, let's go get them. All right. Feel the warmth. Look, now you're a king chicken. Come on. <laughs> Come on. But alrighty, guys, I have a ton of editing, like I said, and a ton of chicken coop planning to do. So that's going to be it. I will tell you all all about these guys, where they're going to live, and all of that good stuff in the next video. We're also going to be cutting the rest of the decking now that the sawmill is good to go. So. We're gonna be doing that first thing in the morning. It's gonna be a couple days for y'all, but yeah, it was a really good day. We got chickens, I'm so excited. Okay, bye. Baby, don't you understand that we only get one